Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's uh, Down Under Mastermind call. Tonight we're going to be covering AWeber. So let's get into it. Um, if I, there we have it. AWeber. This is what you get when you log into your AWeber. That's the home page and it'll tell you how many subscribers you have and it will give you a rundown on stuff. There's all my lists um, and it gives you a breakdown of how many subscribers in each list. So messages. I dare say you've all and you can when you select messages at the top here as it gives you your current list so if you want to change you can go to a different list if you want and it'll change the um, messages you have that's an old SFM list of mine so it's got all the old messages in there um, when, when the new ones come on I, um, I create a new list so the current the current one is there. So we'll start off by um, once we once we get into our messages, if you click on what well you see here, you can edit your messages. Click edit. Comes up. And by clicking on you can actually go and change your messages and highlight something and start typing and that will change the message um, actually if I get out of those ones I don't want to change that I can play around in one I've already that I'm not using uh, So this is a test one I've set up, so um, <coughs> we can go in and oh. so if we highlight there, you can start by saying hi. and carry on and, and change whatever you like in it um, that's your and then then when you finish the editing you can put save changes what I also do is um, if you want you can add a signature block um, so I go you grab the signature block and drop it down there and you can have a logo under there as well and that puts it in however we'll go through shortly and I'll show you how you can edit that and put in all your details in there so it's um, quite simple to personalize your messages by putting your logo and your signature block underneath um, and then yeah, once you're finished click save and then if you click next it'll go to the next hang on settings and exit and save we're thinking and then you can go on and do the next one but to change our list settings we'll go into list settings now which um, you can one that's already set up so you've got your basic information there your list name um, what the list description is uh, you've got your name and your email address and down here you've got um, your notifications so that 
when there's someone subscribes to the list, it'll send you an email. I had that on my um, default email account, and then I started getting lots of leads in, so all of a sudden you find you've got a full inbox. So I've, I've created another um, email address so that all my leads and notifications go to that email address. And you can, you can add other ones there by entering your name and email address. Um, and click Save Settings. Uh, Personalise your list, so that's the next step. And this is where you can um, upload a logo. I've already got uh, my picture in there, but if you click on there, you can choose a file. So choose a file from your computer, and you can just upload that and put it in as your logo. And your email signature block is here, where well, you can put your company name, um, your website URL, and then in here you've got um, email signature. So I've entered my name, I've entered my um, phone number, I've entered my Skype address, I've entered my Facebook, I've entered my website, and you can put all you can put more details in there if you want. It's what will appear in your signature block. So you can actually drag that signature block and drop it into your messages, like I showed you just before. Um, and you've got um, social media and sharing down there that you can all link up to that as well. And down the bottom, you've got your global snippets. So you'll see in um, in your SFM emails that you have your you know, where the blue boxes with full name and surname, uh, username, and stuff like that. That's where your you enter your global snippets. So I entered Robbie for my first name, my full name, and my SFM user ID there. Uh, who are we getting feedback from? Oh, sorry. Um, if I just ask you to um, mute yourself out at the moment, unless you want to talk um, or you've got any questions, and that way we don't get any feedback. Another idea is when you come on these calls, um, either wear headphones or earplugs, and that stops feedback as well. In fact, uh, yeah. All right, let's. Uh, that side of it and the next one is confirmed um, your confirmed message so if um, I know most of the time you have it turned off but occasionally um, Aweber will send them a confirmed opt-in so they have to confirm it. So it pays just to go into here and um, edit it. So for mine, it's uh, I'll just put. Some. That one's not very good tonight. So 
they just put in a message like that and that way if someone you can go a little bit more detail if you want um, not many of them will get it but there's occasionally that Aweber will actually send them through to um, confirmed opt-in and you you, you want to send to have a personal message in there so that um, when they do go through to that they um, then you know you're not losing them because you haven't set it up correctly and in here you can put the website that you want them to go through to um, and I'll just put a SFN page in there, save settings, and that's that done. Uh, we have custom fields, we've done all that. Yep. Subscribers, uh, we can go in and manage our subscribers add new ones, put sign-ups in for, uh, and we just, it's not doing it before, ah, you need to have a list that's um, got people in it, And in here you can um, you can do searches for um, what they've done. So if you you've got a where we unopened, not opens. So you can actually um, type in there, put on un unopened things, and set a date since. pick a date and then go search and it'll give you all the sus subscribers that um, haven't opened the emails so you can actually look through and see unopened emails um, you've got you've got a great selection of, of different uh, criteria you can look up um, you can actually look up the, the last message they received or the, and you can add other fields as well so you might say well I've received three of the boot camp um, things and then you can say well how many of them have they opened by going down and, and selecting uh, not opened uh, last messages but yeah so you can go through there and um, you can also do click on the unsubscribed um, people that have unsubscribed I've actually cleared mine. Excuse me, Robbie, can you hear me? Yep. Um, we just have a question um, yep. on the section just before that. Um, and they're asking if you could go through that again. How can I check um, messages has been opened or not? Uh, so you could just run through that just before you, what you came here. Yep. Yep. Well, no, this is, this is where you'll find the messages. You can find messages that haven't been opened. Uh, where are we? So if we go... Not opened. Oh, mere messages not opened. Quick search. Uh, hang on, we've got something wrong here. Oh yeah, so you 
message is not open and then you can say if it, it was uh, number five we select that and we go search and it shows you um, those that have received message five but haven't opened it or you can select another message say video one even and research that and it tells me who's it Robbie fellow he doesn't open his messages <laughs> you're funny Robbie <laughs> so so that's how we check to see um, which one like we can check all our video boot camp series like that yeah um, to see who's opened it who's received it who's opened it yeah okay and um, we have another question which I think pertains to this section as well yeah and I would also like to know how to get the percentage of open rate um, percentage of open rate. Um, it's where did I find that not opened? Message is not open. Message is opened. So you can actually um, work it out probably. So um, if you go video one and do a search of the messages that have been open, and then um, oh, this must oh yeah, I can't have many on this list. Hmm. I think when you actually um, when you actually pick a list. Yeah. Um, and it shows the list straight up before you get into this section here. If, um, if you go into your messages, Robbie, in your, in your messages tab, it brings up on the right hand side. The that's what I was looking for, rate. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, there. yeah, yeah. There's the percentage of open rates there. Yeah. So, yeah, so you're looking down there. That's what I was talking about, Robbie, yeah, but yeah. Um, somebody else explained it much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> But you can also, yeah, as I said, you, with that so other one. That's how we get our percentages. Yeah. But you see, you go down the list and they get less. Yeah, with the other one, it's more concise, isn't it? You're actually pinpointing um, who's exactly not opening. who didn't open it yeah. yet or who did open it and that sort of stuff, yeah. And what you can actually do then is say, well, um, you find out, like if you do a broadcast, for example, you send a broadcast message out and you can then resend the message to all those that didn't open and change the heading so change their um, the headline on it and resend the same message with a different headline and you, you might pick up a few more people that open it yep yep okay yeah um, actually if we go to home go to broadcast so if you create a broadcast oh yeah, yeah uh, maybe I have to do it I might do a video on that one because it takes a bit of time to you know because you've got to put all the details in but yeah, you can resend them, and um, I think I'll leave this page. Like, I think those those two there were the same same broadcast. The only thing is, I put a different headline up, and I had ten open mm. the first one, and sort of, I sort of like what I yeah. Yeah, sort of like what I did with it, with um, my newsletter that I was I yeah. sent out um, to, for my business. I sent out the newsletter, and I had um, seventy five percent of my list opened the newsletter, yeah. um, and the other ones had received it but hadn't opened it. 
so I just went back into that newsletter and I just changed the headline yeah. um, and got a few more open rates, but it was basically yeah. the same newsletter that I'd sent out previously. Yeah, well, if you can see here, I, I sent it to 115, the first one, 10 people opened it. Mm -hmm. So the second time I sent it out, it only went to 100, 405 because those 10 weren't on the list the second time and I just changed the, um, the headline and I got another eight people opened it. Mm -hmm. Still not a very good open rate out of 400 and something, but um, but then that list was made That's up of the, the, the quality of the list. That list was leads, made. Yeah, yeah. more to do with the quality of leads. That list was made up from um, was it Safe Swap ads, which um, yeah, basically the oh yep yep <laughs> the the results you get from them, um, you might get lots of leads, but there's not a lot of people open them, and that's why I stopped using Safe Swaps. Yeah, I think some of the um, I think some of the uh, the cheaper solo ads. Um, yeah. Uh, services suppliers, I think that like they send you lots of leads, you get lots of leads, but whether or not you're getting quality leads, no, you don't, you don't. List that will actually open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah safe swaps is um, solar. So you ad. might get maybe one in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we will be on subscribers. Um, I'm not sure how you import history and that sort of thing, but um, yeah, you can do your searches through there, and yeah, there's lots of. It's just a matter of playing around and having a look. Um, having a look yeah, doesn't. Karen was just asking while we we're talking about that. She was just asking if you send that message the second time, um, that doesn't replace the original, um, does it? Does doesn't replace the original message? No. No, so if you, you if you've seen the headline on it, yeah, if you've seen it, it, it sends them. You you'll get another email come in, and um, so the, it'll be in your inbox. And if you haven't opened it, you haven't opened it, and you, there's no, another message comes in from the same person. It's a different headline. If you leave the headline the same, oh, I've already had that one, and they'll ignore it. Whereas the headline, if you change the headline, they go, oh. That sounds interesting. Whereas the the time before they did they didn't think it was interesting, so they didn't click on it. Yep. But yeah, changing. And we also have another another question. Um, can you do it another way and check by subscriber what they have opened? Um, well, that was in what you were showing us with um, that that list there when we're checking on open rate when you were showing us how to check who who'd opened and who hadn't. By, by clicking on on the particular subscriber, mm. it gives you a report. I mean, it, it goes into detail what they've done. So a broadcast was yep. sent, um, and yeah. and if you put you click down here, they've. They've had quite a few broadcasts sent, um, follow-up messages. Uh, I did see somewhere where it would show whether they opened okay, them. Okay, so that's... That's what? That's the one subscriber, isn't it? Yeah, that's just one. That's yeah. Eugenia Christopher. Um, and then if, if you go down and you want to see another one, you just click on them. Um, these ones have only just got their name, so, and this said mm -hmm. So, yeah, they, they can see, you see all in the that, ones. In that section. Yep. Yep. In that section when you, where, where you had um, manage subscribers, um, in there you should be able to click on open, like who's opened it, and you'll see who's opened. Will, will that show the broadcast or just the list? Um, it should show the broadcast we as well. Manage subscribers. Yeah, we're on manage subscribers yeah, now, yeah. and you want open messages. Yeah, you clicked on messages open. open. Messages, yeah. Oh, not opened. Yep. Well, messages open there, and 
choose one. You can you can have broadcasts or follow up. Or follow up. Yeah. Okay, so cool. so you can check your broadcast messages as well. And if you click on there and go search, you can see that there's. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's showing you all the people who have opened. Yeah, and then you can again awesome. you can click on um, them and see the details. And okay, it, cool. it so shows, you can uh, pinpoint it down to each one. So yeah, when when you go in because the one before hadn't opened anything, it didn't show up, it just said the broadcast was sent, but as you can see with this subscriber, they've um, clicked on it and they've opened it and it tells you, so the broadcast was sent, um, broadcast sent, opened, and there we have, oh yeah, cool, yeah, that, that one, broadcast, you didn't even see, the broadcast was sent, they how opened many days it. After you sent the broadcast. Yeah, it tells you the date and time that they opened it and then they clicked on the link in it. Sweet. And this person here has clicked on the link twice, same one. Okay. Or yeah, but yeah, if they haven't if, if they haven't opened it or haven't clicked on it, it doesn't show up in here. And then you yeah. If you go, you can go further down the list. This one's actually a good one. They've opened lots. In fact, they opened a whole lot in the one day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Keen. Yeah. They must have. They must have been bored that day. I'm not that diligent with the email box. I can tell you. <laughs> So yeah, and what else? Currently subscribed today. Um, sign up forms, and that lists all the all the sign up forms that you've created down there. And then you can create new ones if you like. So if we click on that. Um, and you have your templates um, with your simple e capture. Most of the time, you don't need all the, you know, you don't need to worry about what template it is, because um, in the simple e capture, they they only interested in the data on the form. They don't want any of the stuff. So you click through and you can close all these bits and pieces off so that you don't that you don't need because generally all you want is a name, your email and the sign up button. Yep. And now that it that is where I would go if I wanted to design a sign up form to put in my widget bar on my website as well, isn't it? Yep. Yep. So you can you can well if you say, well, we'll grab that one and you can change the colours. Uh, load template and you can edit that and input so you can add put the email in there and get rid of the label if you like and do the same with the name I don't don't think you can do that. Never mind. We'll leave it like that. We go to the next step, and this is where you put in. Well, you put the name of the web form, would you need to size that template, Robbie, for your widget um, bar, or will it automatically size? Um. I think it will, if we go, let's say that, we'll go back. Did they have a size? Uh, no, 
you can resize it there, is it? Yeah. So you can make it by bigger or smaller if you like by re clicking the resize button. Okay, cool. Um, then we go to the next one. I'll save form. Go to step two. You put the name of it in there. You can use Facebook integration, so it will pick this stuff from Facebook. But you've got to have at least three hundred. I found with the, I found with the enable Facebook registration form, you can't use that in the widget bar of your website. It's oh. because it's yeah. the size. Yeah. So I, I don't so you're normally use sure it. You've, you've unchecked that. Yeah, I, I, I uncheck it normally as well. And then you yeah. can, um, the thank you page that you want to send them to. Uh, so and normally you put custom and then put the URL in there. And generally, yep. and generally what I do and, is... And, and Karen was just saying, can you explain how the widget... Um, or show the widget thing, please. I don't know about it. Um, what Robbie's doing here, um, Karen, is he's um, showing us how we can do up just a basic um, sign-in uh, form that's small that we can put in a widget bar on a website. The widget bar is that either that bar on the right-hand side or the le left-hand side of a website that you'll see that has your banners in it. Um, where you put your, your advertising banners. So any website that you go to, you'll see on the right-hand side, or on the left, sometimes they have it on the left-hand side, and there'll be some advertising banners to say like GoDaddy, Hootsuite, Six Figure Mentors. That's the widget bar. And this is the sign-up form that we're doing, so you can actually put that into the widget bar of your website. So Did I explain uh, uh, that right, Robbie? Um, so if we log, there's my website, if I go down here, there's where the widget bar is, down here. So I've got some, the tidy URL add, um, my lead bar add there, and you can actually put in um, an Aweber form down here as well in your widget. Uh, if I go edit page. Yeah, I've got one on my one-stop Allo shop page. Um, I want to show them that. Where are we? Go to widgets and your settings, isn't it? App appearance. Settings widgets. You want. Yeah, yeah, there. Appearance. Go into widgets. And down here you've got your main sidebar. Um, we have grab a text widget. If we put it at the top, stick that there. Um, I'll now, we'll carry on and... Um, finish this web form and I'll go and put it on my site. So therefore, there I've just put in a um, yeah, cool. thank you page on there. And we do the custom. If they've already uh, subscribed, I normally send them to the same place. Yeah. So send them to the same thank you page. Save form. Go to step three. And install my web form and raw HTML code copy that and if I now go to and paste it in there Done. Go to view site. We now have our web form in here. And there you go. Nice small little form. <laughs> I need. I, I need to That's go. Fooled around with the size of it. But yeah. Yeah, because I mucked around with the size. That's why it's so small in there. Um, yeah. But there. <laughs> but if you actually went back to your widget area, 
there where that form is. I can show you an easy way to fix that. Uh, if you know coding, you can just go back to your widget and you can just change the coding, the size in the coding, like you do with a YouTube video on the embed code. Yeah. There we go, appearance. Have you ever widget. done that? What's that? I changed the size of videos. Have I you ever it. done that with a, yeah, with the coding? Good. Yeah. I do it all the time with videos. If it doesn't, it's yeah. not small enough, I go. If you, it's a matter of finding it in because there's there's so much code in there. I think so it's much pro code, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm saying if you know where to look for yeah. it in here, yeah. you could just automatically change the size of it in here. Because I I've actually done it before with um changed um these for when I've been doing link rotators. I've gone through yep. and put put people's um, SFM codes in, in here so that they don't have to send me a web form. I just create the web form and then I just put their user name in to do it. But, um, that's getting too complicated for beginners. Yeah, that's too complicated for beginners. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, the easiest way to do it is if you, if you get it and it's the wrong size, just go back into your design of your form, wherever it is. Resize it and then save it again. Yeah. Yeah. But that's bizarre because it looked all right in here. Um, but never mind. Uh, save form. That's how you do forms. Go, go to, yeah. And then you just go and get the new code because it'll be resized. You just go yeah. and get your new code and reinstall it. But I think um, down the bottom here, you've got to uncheck that box, haven't you, where it says include beautiful form styles? No, that's if you're using it in like tidy URLs, I mean um, simple lead capture. If you uncheck that, it just it okay. gets rid of all the, all the design features and just gives you the basic code. But the, they have issues with okay. it. When you click on it, it, it doesn't change. Uh, yep. You have to go out. Yep and then go back in. Refresh a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, we don't know what yeah, that's why I remember yeah. seeing a video where Stuart explained that. Yeah. When so you go back in. Something to do with the simple. And click publish. HTML. See so it changed then. And that's what he's talking about. You, when you click yep. that, it, it normally changes. But when you're creating the form and you click it, it doesn't change. You have to actually get out and then go back in and click on publish mm -hmm. and, and do it then. So do we have any questions on Aweber? Well, I've sort of been reading the questions out as we go. Yeah. I think most people should be unmuted now. Uh, Ten Ds. We've got 19 on. Wow. Yeah, they're unmuted now. So if anyone wants... Oh. Actually, I have something that might be a good idea. Do you know where the Aweber apps are um, for like WordPress, Facebook and stuff like that? So I think it's in your home section, isn't it? What's this in? In Aweber here. My Aweber. apps up the top there. See where it says My apps up the top? Oh, yeah. Click on that. You probably haven't used many of these. But no, see that Facebook app there? That one there? That Facebook. That Facebook app, that's the one that you install in it. Yeah, that's the one you install in a tab on your Facebook page so you can put a sign-up form in your Facebook tab. That All particular right. one, that's what that app is for. And if you view the other apps, um, see where it says view all apps, just above the Facebook thing there, I'll click on my apps. It doesn't really matter. Um, see how you've got all your other apps? So you've got PayPal uh, ones, ClickBank ones, SFM apps, press ones, SFM ones. Yep, 
you've got your WordPress one. Um, I've used that one. A little bit complicated, but I worked my way through it. But yeah, all these apps um, do different things for either your social media um, or your websites and stuff. So yeah. Uh, learn something new every day. I didn't know about those. That's all right. Didn't you know about those, Robbie? No. Yeah, no, I, I've used I've used the WordPress one, I've used the Facebook one, um, I've used the ClickBank one. Um, yeah. I think I think that was about it that that about all that I used. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is video tutorials in Aweber. So how how would they find the knowledge base in Aweber, Robbie? Help. Mm -hmm. Where are the video? There is video somewhere, isn't there? I um, maybe. Quick help. You've got quick help down the bottom there, so that's a start. Down the bottom of your pages, you've got a quick help section down the bottom of your pages there. So that's basic. I think if you click yeah. on one of those, it'll actually take you into the knowledge area. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there's the knowledge base. It takes you into the knowledge base and you've got everything in Create. the related topic. Um, so you, yeah, how to use your apps, how to do your forms. A lot of them have little videos and then the walkthroughs below them. Yeah. Knowledge base. Then you have a list of um, getting started, integrating. So what is RSS and affiliates? There's yeah. even a knowledge base down there for affiliates. So yeah. you're doing a bit of affiliate marketing with ClickBank and um, and stuff like that. I'd suggest you watch those affiliate videos. They're very helpful. Well, they should, they all should be signed up to as an Aweber affiliate anyway, because that's covered in the training. Yeah, they they should be, but I don't think a lot of them are. You know, I, I don't think, and, and I don't think a lot of new members realise that they're actually an affiliate and of Aweber. The the thing is, and they probably don't even know that they can get a banner from anywhere in here to put on their site. Well, when when you, with you know, your marketing banner. Yeah, when you're when you're with SEF, if you sign up new members, and they sign up with Aweber, that means you'll get paid. You'll get paid a commission for all your all the people that sign up under you, because in SEFM when you sign yeah. up for Aweber, they and someone signs that's like if someone signed up under me in SEFM. And then as they're going through the training, they click on the link to register for Aweber account. That means I get a commission for every time I'm from Aweber because I'm an affiliate. Yeah, but I, I don't think a lot of new members realise that they actually are an Aweber affiliate. Yeah. So you can get an actual Aweber banner and put that on your website. So when people visit your website, it's got your affiliate link in it. You can you can install your affiliate link in the bottom of your Aweber sign-up forms as well. So if yep. somebody comes across your website and sees your sign-up form in your widget bar or somewhere on your site, and they see Aweber down the bottom and they click on that, they go through on your affiliate link, and yep. if you've got your PayPal set up, you'll actually get a commission off of that if they sign up to Aweber as well. Yeah. 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 But I just don't think a lot of new members actually realise that they were affiliates of Aweber when they came when they sign up and went through the process in um, 
yeah. in SFM because I, I know I didn't when I was a brand new Hi. member. Uh, where is that? Someone just sent a big message. Um, we can run through that um, some stage if you want, Linda. I can get on a call with you and go through it. Or you can go in the help. Yeah, in yeah. the quick help down the bottom of that, that particular page that she's on, she should find it in that. Yeah. Um, or or she can, yeah or she can jump on a Skype call with you, Robbie, and and yeah. Robbie would be happy to walk you through that. Alicia just wanted to know because she didn't um, she wanted to know if she had to do anything extra to be an affiliate for Aweber because she didn't realise that I. Um, I think and, you've got to actually. In SFM, there is there, there, in one of the one of the sections you go through, you sign up as an affiliate. It's, it's part of the training. Yeah, and that that gives you that gives you your affiliate number, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I'm just not sure where in the back of SFM you would find that. It might be under your account section, um, in, Alicia. I mean, you might just have to look around in a few areas there in in your SFM back office, and you should find um, where it says that you're an affiliate of um, Aweber. And then to get your banners for Aweber, you'll actually come into Aweber. Um, if you go um, in, in um, SFM, hang on, we'll just show you. If, under Accounts, Affiliate Program. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, might be in there. Aweber is there. Is where you there it is. And you will view video on how to do it. I think. Yep. So that will go through how to um, sign up. But yeah, up there. And that is my affiliate code. So anyone that signs up under me and is going through the SFM training and clicks to sign up to Aweber, I'll get a commission from Aweber. Um, for you know them, it's one of the bonuses. Of yeah, being, but yeah. I think SFM member. Yeah, but I think Robbie um, for the extra commissions as an affiliate with Aweber, you've just got one more step to go through. So once you set up the stuff in the back office, office here as an SFM member, yeah. once you're logged into your Aweber account, then I think you have to click on something uh, affiliate and set up your affiliate account with Aweber. Well, so you've got to enter in your PayPal um, account details and stuff. So that way you can then take a banner, an Aweber banner, and actually put that Aweber banner on any website that you own or on or you know put it in Facebook or whatever. So that that way, if somebody who's not an SFM member clicks on that Aweber banner and signs up with Aweber, you actually get a commission, and yeah. Aweber pays that into your um, PayPal account. Yeah, but when you, to get yeah, that so number, I think that's the extra step you have to do. To, yeah, to, to but when you're signing up with, it, you have to sign up separately as an Aweber affiliate, which is different than signing up for a, an Aweber account which is also covered in the training in the back office in one of those modules. I think they took that out, Robbie. Oh, did they? Yeah, I was going through the modules the other day and I didn't notice it in there because um, uh, Stuart's been making some of the changes and the updates and stuff and at the oh. moment yeah. um, I can't find that actual particular video. I was looking for it to, to help with the call tonight yeah. but I couldn't find it in the startup module so I think they've taken that out. So. You'd actually come into Aweber here, even when you're logged in here. If you go to, I think it's your account uh, settings affiliates. or whatever, you can choose to. Yeah, you can go. Uh, it tells you there how to get started. Go to the knowledge base and watch the videos, and it tells you how to do it. 
how to become a, a yeah how to sign up yes yeah. sign up for a free affiliate account under there yeah yeah So yeah, you can sign up for Aweber and um, promote Aweber on your website as well and get extra commission, extra income. Sign up once and any time someone signs up, I like that. Get, get paid. Do we have any other questions? Well, it makes sense because that's the autoresponder you're using. Yeah, and when you're talking in your blogs um, and and you know describing your digital journey, at some stage in one of your blogs, you'll talk about autoresponders, what they are and how they work, and um, so you know, and because you use Aweber, it's beneficial to actually have your affiliate account set up properly with Aweber, so that that way you can install your Aweber banner into your blog and and yeah, and get some extra. Um, extra commissions that way as well. Uh, what's it Yvonne has said? So is it affiliate ID? Is it uh, Yvonne are you talking about the Aweber affiliate link? Yeah, what she was saying, yeah. Robbie, there I think I get that, was she's taken her SFM affiliate ID link and entered it um, and it says it doesn't recognise, it says not recognised, should we put anything in that field? Um, yeah, you'll need, to, you'll need to go and sign up with Aweber and then put that in your SFM You'll get an, um, where are we? I think yeah. the first thing you get from Aweber when you sign up is, because um, you sign up under the $1 trial, I think the first thing you get from Aweber is an email asking you to confirm your sign up. Yeah. And if you don't confirm that within a certain amount of time, then you drop off and they don't recognise you. Um, so to get your affiliate ID inside of at the SFM, you need to actually take up the, um, the, yeah, you need to sign up for an account with Aweber. So you'll actually click on the link from inside your SFM um, back office. That will take you to the sign-in um, form on Aweber for the $1 trial. Um, which then is that setting up your autoresponder account so you can upload your video boot camps and, um, and own your own list. That's how you own your own list. So you can, you know, you can contact that list of, at, at later dates and broadcast and stuff too. That, that's when you get your ID. Um, I think it comes in an email, in your email box. Probably. It's a while ago since I did it. And I think it's, I think nowadays, I think it's automatically recognised by SFM, if I remember correctly, due to the app that we now have in the, in the back of, in the Aweber there. Yeah, maybe. Because of the integration that they were doing from the SFM to Aweber to make it a lot easier for the um, list branding and list reports and stuff. Uh. Yeah, um, name yeah, you can do, you just pick the templates. Um, where are we back to Aweber? Sign up forms. Create a new. And yeah, some of them you'll be able to add pictures behind them. Customizer. Yeah, 
Yeah, do, it's, it'll be a matter of just going through um, the templates and there'd be some that you can edit the background image so you can put your own um, picture behind it or you can either you can go to the likes of um, simply hey, simply capture and do it that way and just put the basic form in simply capture and you can edit your pictures and create put whatever pictures you want behind your thing behind your forms. I think you can um, build a basic um, landing page in Aweber now as well from like a blank t template. Uh, possibly. I read in one of my last emails anyway. Image. There you go. You can um, up the top it's got image and you can put your image mm -hmm. URL in there. So with the image that you're putting in there, Robbie, would you just go to one of your websites and take an image URL from something that you're hosting on your website, yeah, like yeah. you're doing? Yeah, that's what I was about to do. So if I go to image library, um, and pick. Where do I get that URL from? Copy image URL? No, yeah, over there, yeah. That's not letting me copy that one. What about if I go to one of my pages that will have it on it? be just a matter of playing around with your images because some of your images yeah. you may have to resize before it'll upload because some images are too big or too small. I've had that happen to me. Your image is too small. <laughs> you could probably take an image off your Facebook page or something like that too, couldn't you, Bob? Yeah, as, as, as long as you've got a URL around for it. Would that work, Trigger? Mm. So if I go to edit page. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not working. No, it's a word. It's optimized press. I'll get an image yet. <laughs> Wouldn't it have just been easier to, keep, to go into your media, Robbie, and just choose an image from in there? Probably. Because if you go into your, your, your media here, if you go, go in there, just go into your library, um, Choose, choose a small round image or something, Greg and Fiona Scott there. Save link. You copy the URL. Yeah. yeah. No, it hasn't changed. It's a matter, yeah, be a matter of playing around. It could be the image too, Robbie. It could have been too big or something. You may just need to play around with it. Image yeah. processing. The image is oh. processing. All oh, right. Where did you yeah. see that? The image may be too big or something. Yeah, it could be. But yeah, you can do it up there anyway.
Well, that tells you can put a counter on it. How many readers? But again, it's just getting in and having a look and playing. That's how I do it. Yeah, because it's not saved until you save it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and if it goes to so custard, you can sit well, there and just fool around with as much as you want. And even if it yeah. doesn't, if it, if it doesn't work out right, you just create a new one. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sign up forms that's why I've got so many see and a lot of them aren't used because I create forms and oh, no I don't like that one I'll leave it maybe I should go through and delete some of them yeah yeah you, you could use with a bit of a tidy up <laughs> <laughs> like that one won't be used anymore because it's safe swaps. Uh, but yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? I had a question, you know, and it's just totally escaped me. I did it. Hmm. Uh. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. We probably all have times like that. It was right on the tip of my tongue too. I shouldn't have opened my mouth. It escaped and run away. Yeah. <laughs> So, anything, anyone got anything they want to say other than it's not on uh, Aweber? To create a new list, they just click on create a new list, don't they, Robbie? Yep. Where are we? Just right up the top there, near. Oh, create yeah. A new, um, new create, list, yeah. Create and manage lists. And... Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you can, yeah. Create Just a new list, yeah. Create a new list. And... So, like, if I, um, if I joined um, the SFM and I had my boot camps in my list, set all of that up according to the training in the back office, yeah. and then, you know, I'd come a you know, few weeks or a couple of months down the track and had learnt about affiliate marketing with other products like Amazon products or ClickBank, um, office and I wanted to set up a, a a way of capturing you know leads from a promotion on that I can set up a new list like you're doing here and I can yeah. name it like you know Aweber or Clickbank or whatever. Um, what you can also do is yeah. you once you've set up your list and customized it um, if we go back So like, so like you've set up your SFM list mm -hmm. and you've gone through and you've customised your emails. Yep. You can copy that list and put it into a new list if you want. So you have... Yeah. yeah. Instead of um, uploading the SFM um, list again... Uh, Leave the setup process. Yeah. If we go to this, so for that one, for example, well, we go there. Manage list, isn't it? Um, D was just saying, what's the general consensus? Read personal contact details at the end of autoresponder emails. I'm planning to get a PO box rather than providing my home address. Um, are there any other options? Well, I don't think you even have to supply an address, do you? Um, yep, you have to have an address. 
because it appears it appeared um, when you put in your contact address it, it actually appears at the bottom of your emails. It's um, one of the requirements okay. you have to you have to have an address. But uh, I don't think you have to actually put the number of your house though, do you? You just need the street name. Yeah, probably. But yes, yeah, so if we go follow up messages, we come down the bottom and you click on here, you can have um, follow up message only, broadcast only or follow up and broadcast. So I put follow up only, save and that number there, oh, hang on it's just disappeared. You can copy that and that will give you copy all the messages that you've um, actually customized. So all your if you've been through and customized all your SFM messages, you come down the bottom, click there, follow up or broadcast, I just put follow up, copy that and on your neck when you're creating new messages just like you do when, when you're uploading your SFM messages post paste it in that box down the bottom and that'll upload all your customized messages to your new list so okay, you don't so you can create um, a, a new list and you don't have to go through the whole process again you yeah, correct. come in here with yeah. your customized stuff and Stuff, yeah. Yeah, just copy your lo uh, all your messages, so you you create a new list, copy all your messages, and you can add it to your new list. Um, like I can go to one of these default ones, uh, follow up series. Oh, that's got messages in it already. That's old ones. Jody just says, Guy and Alan suggest we use anything but our actual address. Yeah. So, it, did you mean that they mean that we must must use our actual address or something other than our actual address? Well, I think. Yeah, I don't know because I've had a PO box. I've had a P I've had a PO box for about ten years, and that's all I ever use. So it doesn't matter where I travel around the country. I, I always have the PO box. Yeah. So if I we go and create a new list, uh, next step. to messages campaign sharing I paste that code in there oops oops no I didn't copy it bugger <laughs> I thought you did copy it I thought I did too but I haven't that's not the campaign code though. No. That's easy. I can go back to another list. And because I've saved that list, copy. 
copy this. Did you copy it? Yep. And it loads that campaign. But it takes a bit bit of time to actually upload that list. Okay, now while we're waiting for that to happen, um, can you upload email addresses from elsewhere? Um, like say I have a way, well okay, I have a way that I can capture email um, addresses on Facebook, right? And they go into um, my my file with this thing that I use on Facebook. Is there a way, can, if I um, download them onto my computer and put them into a, um, I think they call it a CSV or something file, can I then yep. upload those email accounts to Aweber? Um, possibly. Import more than 10 subscribers. Yeah. And next. So I choose the list I wanted to import them to, yeah? So, so there, there you are, you've got a... Yeah, that's it, a CSV. CSV file? And just drag it and drop it in there. That's it, yep. Cool. Or you can just copy and paste the email addresses in there. And then carry on. Yep. So there's all my follow-up messages that have now come yeah, through on there. I have a couple of third-party apps that I use in different places. Yep. <laughs> Nina's just like, you get email addresses in Facebook? I'm like, yeah, Nina, I do. <laughs> but I pay for a third-party app that I use on Facebook that does that for me. It's, it's a software program I purchased. All right. And it costs me $22 a month. So, do we have any more questions? Does it not breach any terms and conditions? Chris, no, the third party app where, um, software that I use does not breach the Facebook terms and conditions. It's actually um, it's actually in line with Facebook. Okay. Scraping, um, most scraping tools, Chris, do actually breach nowadays. They do actually breach the Facebook um, terms and conditions. And um, they um, they are starting to crack down on that. So just be careful which scraping tool you buy. You can still buy some scraping tools and and collect um, information from your from your customers. But whether you'll actually get proper email addresses from that, I'm not sure. You'll have to invest you investigate your scraping tool because most scraping tools are used to collect your Facebook use uh, your Facebook the Facebook people's users IDs and um, then you can upload that to your custom audience on Facebook when you're doing some advertising. But just be a little bit careful with that because some people have gotten a bit of a, a, a back slap from Facebook. Yeah, um, I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so yeah, that you can just be, yeah, you might just need to be a little bit careful about that. When when you're doing anything like scraping and that sort of stuff, it's it's going under. It's stuff that Facebook and Google and all the rest of them don't like. Um, well, 
we used to be able to do it, Robbie. Um, Facebook oh, yeah. didn't mind the scraping tool. Um, it, but it was, it's only been in the last um, two months that Facebook has actually started to step up with the changes to their algorithm and say no more scraping tools. Um, but there are still one or two companies out there that are Facebook compliant. So, yeah. But I don't think those scraping tools actually give you email accounts of your customers. Um, so I don't know if it would be any good for, for a list on Facebook. So. But the yeah. tool I use, it, it's not a scraping tool. The person, you know, it does actually collect proper email addresses from the people. So. Yeah, no, Marie's just added um, guidelines updated a few days ago. Unfortunately, scraping tools are no longer allowed on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. There we go. But, I mean, it, ma it makes sense because would you want to be receiving messages from someone that you haven't given your details to? Well, most most marketers were using the scraping tools for their advertising campaigns, okay, to yeah. create custom audiences, right? Um, but the problem with that, with a lot of marketers, they were using the scraping tool and custom audiences and their advertising the wrong way. Yeah. So they were taking an ad that was irrelevant to the audience that they, the custom audience, that was totally irrelevant, and they were getting their ad in front of that custom audience. They had purposely targeted people that would not even be considering um, yeah. their ad, but they've purposely used the scraping tool, custom audience, and got their ad in front of those people, and it's really pissed a lot of members off on Facebook, because yeah. just because, you know, people doing the advertising the wrong way. Yeah. Um, but you can, I do know for your custom audiences in Facebook with your Facebook advertising, you can upload your list from Aweber as a custom audience on um, Facebook. Yeah. I think you've just got to convert it to a um, CSV file. All oh, right. So if you already have a list, so like you, Robbie, if you have like basically a, an inactive list from a cheap safe swap, swaps that you did when you like you were new because that's you weren't you know yeah yeah um, and, and it's a good good sized list. Um, say you have um, maybe a product from ClickBank, you know, an ebook or something like that that you you, you know you're offloading from ClickBank, and you're doing an ad on your Facebook fan page for that ebook. You could actually take that list. Um, put it into a CSV file and upload it as a custom audience on Facebook, then anyone on that list who happens to have a Facebook account um, will see your ad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's just your basic... Or, um, or just send them a broadcast message. message. Yeah, or you can just send them a broadcast message. Not that they'll open it, because most of them don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a way of actually getting in front of them so they actually do physically see what's going on and actually click on what they're oh, seeing. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes people are more inclined to click on a sponsored ad in front of them on Facebook than they are to actually open an email in their email account. Yeah. You're right, Chris. <laughs> they might. Yeah. Well, do we have anything else, or do we call it a night? We're getting a bit late now, so... Um, yeah, I'm getting a bit tired. Yeah. You were up early, weren't you, Sandra? Yeah, I've got to get up early again tomorrow, because um, I'm trying to juggle two things tomorrow morning. Early in the morning, I'm trying to juggle the Master Marketing webinar and an actual event that I had actually registered to be on as well and they sort of are going to sort of overlap and clash a bit. Yeah. So I have to set my alarm for um, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, have fun. I will. 
<laughs> I'll have a laptop and an iPad going tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs>